Hello, today we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about the type of tools, plastics, details, stuff like that. Made a list this time so I can keep my head straight, make sure everything comes out right. First we'll talk about, um, well, tools for instance. So let's go over here to the tools and have a look at what I use, just what I use. So here we go. Okay, so basically the tools I use is pretty much what everybody else uses, I guess. You know, you got your files, you know, the mini files. Don't use them a lot. These are two different kinds. These are, have more of a sandpaper type of file texture compared to regular file texture. And of course, exacto blades of every kind. I like using the chisel blades a lot, the big ones. So, um, come in handy. I also use these. I don't buy those little pieces of sandpaper you buy in the hobby shop. You pay $20 for a little pack from some country over in Japan. I won't mention their name. Rhymes with Mamma Mia. Anyways, I like these. These you get at a beauty salon, supply places. They're these emery boards. You know, they're, they're great for, for sanding and if you have to cut them at different angles to get in, 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 in tight places, you can just take some heavy duty scissors or clippers and cut them off at, at different angles. And you have different grits. These are pretty heavy. And these here, are just paint sticks with, um, you know, just sandpaper glued to them. So I buy my sandpaper Home Depot, automotive supply places, because, you know, uh, why spend so much money for what they call modeling sandpaper when you can just uh, go there and buy a big pack because you're gonna end up using it all anyways, right? So buy the big packs. You can get the finer stuff at most automotive places. So don't waste your money buying little pieces of sandpaper this big for $5 for a pack, it's silly, you know. Um, so that's basically my tools. Now, the materials we'll go to next. So anyways, we have our materials. Of course, we already talked about the PVC board, 4x8 sheets. Comes an eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch, you know. It's great for everything. You know, we're cutting just about every shape that you can think of. You know, it does it, triangles. It's best to use a band saw. If you're going to use the stuff in these, unless you're going to buy the eighth inch the stuff, then you can cut it with a blade. But band saw is a real way to go with this kind of stuff. And table saws if you can for straight line stuff. And then there's styrene, which is pretty popular. You can also buy these in hobby shops in smaller pieces. Evergreen sells it. Or you can find a plexiglass plastic supply uh, warehouse where they sell it. 4x8 sheets. Save yourself some money there too. Again, you might pay you know, $20 for a sheet, but it's a four by eight sheet, so it'll last you years, <laughs> actually. And it comes in, of course, every thickness you can think of. And then you got wrench shape slash model plank. This stuff here, you know, it's, you can see it comes in pretty thick pieces. Uh, usually um, it's uh, like two feet wide by 50 inches long by two inches thick, you know. And you can cut it and do just about anything you want. Like this is just a sample, like this little rounded, you know, thing that I just made out of, for whatever, I can't remember what it was for. But it's just regard, you can shape it, round it, cut it as thin as you want, and uh, basically do whatever you like. So um, those are the main materials that I use for everything. is uh, the styrene, a lot of PVC board, or Centra, as some people call it. Uh, and wrench shape slash model plane. All right, we're going to talk about some of uh, the artists that influenced me through the years. Uh, Ron Cobb is, was a great influence on me. Great design, very tight, detailed work. Another person is uh, Sid Mead. This is some of the books that he's put out through the years. This was the first one that I saw that really influenced me the most. He designed uh, for movies like uh, Blade Runner, uh, 2010 and Space Odyssey. Star Trek the motion picture, just to name a couple of things that he's done. So uh, you might want to check him out and see what you can find out. He's a great artist. Uh, I remember reading something he said about design. He says, even though it's not functional, it should at least look functional. Uh, because even though people may not know anything about flying, levitating cars, at least you know what, that it is a flying, levitating car and that it makes sense. And so I've always followed that way of thinking in terms of design and whatnot. So when I worked out in the movie business, uh, my primary job out there was detailing. That's what they hired me for, doing all the little bits 
that's why I decided to do my own take on the Millennium Falcon detail. And then lo and behold, when Episode 7 came out, the detail didn't look much like the one from the original one, at least on the sides. I mean, you got to keep certain things right if you're doing a model from a movie. But, um, yeah, yeah, that's always been my theory because I don't like using tank treads and all the stuff you can really recognize. And I think I said that before in one of my other videos. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, my way of thinking in terms of detailing. And I'll go ahead and show you some of the parts that I use uh, to do my detailing. All right. Okay, here we are, some of the parts that I use. These are, this is just one of many bins that I have, but I thought I'd pull this one out because it's had the most interesting part. This is a library of parts I've collected through the years. You know, like my, some of my Falcon parts here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna use that on the uh, Ghost for some detailing. And as you can see, there's just about everything and anything in here from, you know, resin pieces to, and that's from Spider-Man 2, the back of Doc Ock's girdle inside. It's a piece I designed for the, for the film. Uh, you name it, it's in here. Just tons and tons of parts uh, from the Discovery 2001 Space Odyssey. I can't remember what this is from. I think it might have been from Contact. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of everything. Even silly things like this from an old clock. But you know, maybe someday I'll do a steampunk style ship and I'll be able to use it. Uh, that's the way us model makers think. We, we see something, it could be anywhere. And we say, hey, that could probably be used for blah, blah, blah. You know, so. It's always good to cast up a lot of parts too, because you can use them over and over and over again. You know, it's just like even these little parts here are parts I'm going to use on, you know, the ghost. And you can see the detail on there is pretty, but maybe you can't. I don't have it on close up mode. So, anyways. But I also use things like, and I'm going to back this up, like these power boxes, which I got from, from Home Depot, you know, here, for instance. Uh, they look like great sides of spaceships, so I'm going to do like a, you know, like a construction type ship or, you know, some sort of workhorse model where these things are lined up like so. Now let's go this way. You might see it better. You know, in this kind of configuration, left, right. I'll probably only use two of these and mold them up so I can use them repeatedly over the same, over and over again on both sides. You know, and even the round ones, there's some pretty cool stuff you can find out there if you look, you know. Uh, here's another power box, which is very cool looking. It could be an engine, for instance. Oh, you can't see it over there. An engine for back here. You never know. So I've been collecting the library of parts for that, you know, eventually to to build this thing. It'll probably one off. It probably won't be a kit. You know, it just takes a long time to do kits, as we know. So that's just some of the details that I use for making... There we are. That's some of the details I use to make uh, models, just bits and greebles. If there's anything I missed, let me know. I'm trying to think of everything there is other than plastic detail bits that you use from everything. Even maybe women's stuff, you never know. Lipstick things, underarm, uh, the plastic number, underarm covers. <laughs> Those are pretty interesting shapes. Yeah, nothing's left out. So uh, anyways, that's it for that. And we'll talk later. Bye-bye.